All right, today we're going to look at the count if formula in Google Sheets. So the count if formula is a great way to count the number of cells that match a particular criteria, such as text, numbers, or dates, or even a checkbox. So let's go ahead and jump into the count if formula. As we type in count if, you can see we have count if and count ifs. The difference is count ifs, you can do multiple criteria. Let's go ahead and open our count if. We can see our first thing is our range. And so this is the, going to be the column that we're going to look in to match our criteria. So we're going to start with looking in sales channel and match website. So to match a text, we're going to go ahead and use double quotes and type in website, hit enter. And you can see that we have nine that match website. Or if we type in social media, we can see we have four. Now, we have different criteria we can use, comparatives or logical operators. So for numbers, we can use things like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or not equal to. And so the greater than, less than, and such do not apply to text, but we can use the not equals to in our formula, and that will show the cells that do not match social media. Now, one thing to notice is this is more than we had that matched website. And the reason is because it's counting these blank cells because they do not equal social media. So one thing we can do is we can actually check what is not blank right here with a do not equal sign and then leaving it blank. Now to count blank, we can just simply remove all together and just have a blank string. This counts how many cells are blank. Now, if you have a cell with an empty space in it, like this, you can see it does not get captured. If we add a space in here, you can see now it's getting captured. So that's one thing to keep in note, is if you have a blank space in your data set, it's not going to be captured quite right in the blank count. So another thing you can look at is, let's jump this over to D, is we can also match dates. And so you can put it in a date format like this, you can see here we have one, two. And you can also type it a little more naturally like this. And you still get the same result. All right, so what happens if you don't want it in here? You actually want to reference a cell. So for example, if you have a drop down like this, you want to be able to select one and see the results. So then we can do virtually the same thing. Let's start our formula. And let's go ahead and grab our subscription column, comma. And then you can type or select the cell where you have that selector. And so if we click starter, you can see we have the three, professional, we have five, and so forth. You can do the same thing with dates. We'll select our date column and our cell for our dates. And if we select a subscription date, we'll see the number of ones that match that date. One thing to keep in mind is you can use greater than, less than, or equals to with our date function. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this is a little tricky with the way they like to do it, is you have to put that inside of a string and this ampersand to show the cell. So for example, without the cell, we could do this, we could do 5522, and that will show everything greater than this date. And so you could do less than that, less than or equals to, and you can switch this to greater than equals to. But if we want to reference this date outside of the cell, we want to remove that. And then we do this ampersand, and then we can actually point to that cell. And so now if we select the cell, you can see it changes it. We change this to a, instead of a list from a range, we change this to a date. And we can click in a date in here. You can see now we have this greater than equals to. And so as we go forward, this number should reduce. If we go to five, you can see that drops down now. It says way to reference a date. And now we have here price points. So let's go ahead. The same logic applies for numbers as dates because the way Google handles dates is by converting it into a number. So just a quick way to show you that. If I change this to number, you can see this is the number that represents that date. And so the bigger the number, the bigger the date. And then the same thing applies to numbers. If we have price points here, we can use our same count if. We can check our price points column. 
And then we can use the same logic here. We can just make it equal to this. We can check how many are equal to 49, 99, 249. Or we can check again, greater than equals to. And we can see that all of them are greater than or equal to 49. We jump to 99, it's going to drop down. We go to 249 and drop down yet again. All right, so let's look at a couple more ways to handle text. So, for example, here, what if we need a total number of cells with keyboard professional? But here it's not an exact match. We have some additional text in some of these the professional plan. So we can use this thing called a wildcard. So we go in here, select that, and then we can put professional. But our wildcard is this asterisk symbol. Put that in there. We can see we come up with seven. If we get rid of that wildcard, you can see we only have four. So this allows you to select all those that match. We can check this again in our sales channel and check how we have social media there. So if we go this to C, we can check social, and we can see we have five. Now if we just do social, we have zero. So another thing we can check here now is we have this checkbox for auto renew. So checkbox typically automatically is going to show up as true false. And so what we've shown so far is everything has been going in double quotes. Now, however, when you're doing a true false, you only need to do that in true false. You don't have to put it inside of the double quotes. So we can check here number of true, which is one, two, three, four, five. We can check false and say we have 11. All right, let's go ahead and go to array formula. We're going to show you a cool trick you can do here with count if. And keep in mind, as we go to count ifs next, you cannot do this with count ifs because count ifs does not work in array formula. So this cool trick only works using count if. So we're going to go ahead and open with array formula and then count if. And then here we're going to look at subscriptions. And we want to be able to match them to our list of subscriptions right there. So I'm going to do comma. Instead of referencing one cell, I'm actually going to reference all three. And because I did this inside the array formula, it's going to go ahead and populate. So here we can see we have four, four, and five. And so we can do the same thing here. Formula, count if. And we can check our sales channels. Just like that. All right, and then finally, we're going to go over count ifs. So count ifs is just count if, allowing you to do multiple criteria. Let's go ahead and open this up. And let's look at these two. We're going to use subscription type in sales channel, and then we'll look at a minute in start and end dates. So first off, subscription type, we're going to go ahead and select our column, comma, and our selector right there. And then we'll go ahead and pick our sales channel as well. Hit enter. See, we have four. And as we cycle through, we can see that number changes as we have the different selections. All right. That's all for that. And again, if we had professional plan over here, let's go ahead and do this here real quick. Let's say we have website and professional. If we need to add this professional plan in here, we can do this ampersand like you saw before, double quote, asterisk, and close the double quote, and go like that. And so now we select social media, website. You can see it's capturing these two, these two, or this one I mean, and these two. So we're capturing our five there. Now finally, let's go ahead and look at dates. So let's go ahead and start over with our formula here. And we're going to grab our subscription date. And so we want to match to a start date and end an end date. So what we're going to want to do is let's do greater than or equals to ampersand. And then we'll pick our start date cell. And then since we want to do less than or equals to our end date, we'll grab the same date column. And now we're going to do less than or equal to 
inside of our double quotes, ampersand, and then our end date selector. Enter, currently we have zero, but now we can enter in some dates and see what we wind up with. So let's select February 1st and maybe August 31st, you see I have 14. And so as we wind forward in this, 10, six and so forth. So this is the way to reference your end and start dates inside of account tips formula. All right, that is it for today. Hopefully this helps you with your future projects. Tune back again soon for more helpful tutorials.